All right, welcome everybody. This is the uh, FPGA meetup for Open Research Institute, and it is uh, the 6th of February. What we're going to do today is talk about what we've done over the past little bit, uh, what we are planning on doing for the next little bit of time next week. Uh, if we have any roadblocks uh, that we've encountered, and if we need any resources. So I will hand it off to, uh, to Paul first to talk about Remote Lab West and anything else going on. Uh, and then go ahead and take the floor from there, Ken. Okay, I've got an airplane going overhead. Hope you can't uh, hear it. Remote lab is uh, situation normal. Everything seems to be working. Uh, nothing to report on that. No FPGA activity related to uh, spacecraft this week and nothing uh, no roadblocks at the moment. So short report, go Ken. Hi, uh, let's see if I uh, finished coding up the uh, wrapper. I implemented a uh, async uh, AXI light interface to replace the it's bridged now between that and the streaming interface for the registers in the uh, polyphase filter block. And have been trying to uh, compile. I edited the tickle scripts, uh, but have not been able to get it to compile yet. I'm not sure. I've been trying to follow the uh, DVB. S2 as a guide, but there's something something missing in, in my configuration. I, I'm starting to think it might be outside the tickle script in terms of getting it to recognize that there's a new block here. Uh, so just going to keep trying to compare how the DVB2 uh, encoder was was done and see if I've captured it like are there files I've, I've edited even though it's an automated make file that for the ADI reference design it says don't edit it I've edited it to add the uh, polyphase filter reference but uh, that doesn't seem to be enough I'm, I'm wondering if there's some other file involved that has to have a pick up the the PFB so that's where it's at. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, do you have a particular error message that you're getting um, that you could share with us? Yes, it's uh, it says uh, unable to add the reference block PFB zero. Please add the files to PFB zero's definition into the project. Um, that's actually the error message that I was, I, my script told it to generate, uh, in tickle. Um, basically it's, there's some sort of error trap that is like a standard thing that I got from Suato's, uh, example with the DVB2, um, and then it throws off that error. Uh, I've tried flipping, like, I can't find much documentation for Vivado tickle conventions. Like there's a there's a command called set block name and set block cell name. And I'm expecting set block name to be the instance and set block name set block cell name to reference the uh the module name. Uh but the example seems to do it his example seems to do the opposite for that. I flipped them back and forth. That doesn't seem to make a difference. 
uh, to swoop. I guess I can try and set them to be the same, but that causes confusion, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I've tried to tried to find more details on on this the the tickle syntax here for, it, but I have not been able. To, I looked at the. Uh, I know uh, Michelle, you pointed me to a uh, incorporating third party IP type document. But I'm looking for more fundamental, like the photo syntax type for, for, for these commands. Um, yeah, it has it has something to do with with not recognizing that the file's been been added. It seems to be in the make file now. I think I'm following Suato's example pretty closely in terms of pulling in the files in the tickle. But there must be some other step or some other file that is has to hook in. I don't know if maybe writing the block at like going through a manual, like dropping the block in Vivado and then having write it write out the tickle from that might help. I don't I don't know. I'll keep looking, trying to compare, going to try and basically grip down the file hierarchy and see if I can see any other DDB2 references. Part of part of the issue right now is my branch doesn't have the DDB2. As an example, I've just looked at the, uh, the GitHub and the uh, document that Michelle would point me to. So if I could actually see a live directory of 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 the uh, EVB2 and grab through that, that would help, I think. Okay, I think we can do that. We can install the. Um... DVB S2 encoder into um, into a reference design and and then go through and look for for other files that we need to change. I think that's a good idea. Um, and yes, there's a user guide from Xilinx about uh, exporting or packaging uh, IP. So there's a process in Vivado where you package up your design and then it allows you to put it into a catalog and then or what Vivado calls refers to as a catalog. Um, and then you can you can drag and drop it or drop it into the system board diagram that that Linux block diagram. So that's that's one way to do it. Uh, the way that the analog devices hardware design language reference design works, however, is that it doesn't pay any attention to what you do to the uh, block diagram. So you can change things on the block diagram, but the next th next time you run make. Uh, to make your reference design, it deletes all that stuff because it relies on the tackle scripts that you've been editing. We found that out pretty early on the hard way. Um, so we'll keep keep at it. Um, and there, there are, of course, maybe third or fourth ways to to integrate the designs. Uh, I think I, I did point you at the page from Analog Devices that shows, like, here's how you modify our reference design. They don't really have a procedure laid out. We want to write one. I think it would add a lot to the the, the general, you know, uh, state of state of things if we could finish out our how to add IP blocks to our reference design or the analog devices reference design document, the one that you're talking about with the tackle script in it. Um, but they do have on this page uh, five examples and they just kind of throw out, you know, one's a no OS, no operating system example. Another one is adding an, a, fil a FIR filter. So there's got to be a way to do it. I, I think it's it's a it's a good instinct to try to duplicate Swato's work on the transmitter side with the encoder. And we'll we'll figure it out. The it's a it's a good idea to go ahead and and re-implement the design for the transmitter. It was on the 9371 and not on the 9009. Those are, I think, similar enough, though, to where it would still be useful to compare them. So thank you for all the hard work. This is uh, definitely a big, a big job. Um, just get grappling and and getting, um, you know, 
uh, familiar with the the polyphase uh, filter, uh, you know, the, on the receiver side, that that channelizer, that's a big deal. Um, you know, and then t taking the code and and integrating it into um, a reference design, a transceiver reference design like the one that we're working with is a big deal. And and so I'm I'm not too surprised about the difficulty in getting it to go ahead and and graft in there, um, especially because it sounds like there's some design assumptions that are different. The AXI stream for uh, processor instead of AXI light is a that's a pretty that's a mismatch and thank you for addressing it and and writing the code to to get that done um but we'll get it we'll we will we will defeat this problem um and i'll i'll have time over the next week to help with this um and i've been what i've been doing i'll, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit uh, i haven't done a lot at all on on high fry uh, in this particular design except to try to help ken and whoever else uh, wants to come up to speed with the different parts uh, what I have been doing is is talking a lot about uh, to different people about the ESA or European Space Agency opportunity uh, and trying to make sure that our all of our technical documents and all of our regulatory work was delivered to the to the ESA person in charge. And so far, none of us have heard anything back at all. Uh, so we're standing by and waiting to see how that will go. Um, and the uh, the, what I have been spending time on is Neptune, so the OFDM implementation for uh, terrestrial and aeronautics. That's a data link for drones, um, the open source with an open protocol. So we're just about ready to get a, another big revision in the uh, specification. It, it, we just heard about this yesterday from the author, Andreas Schwarzinger from Roden Schwartz, and uh, at Leonard, uh, the, the lead for, for Neptune, um, has been spending a lot of time on the Python model, uh, and I've been spending a lot of time on the Simulink model that we're going to turn into HDL code and then port to a 9002, so a, a mobile version mm -hmm. of the of the big chip that, that is used on uh, high for IEA or what Ken's working on. Okay, so that's a summary of what I've been up to. Um, all right, any anyone else? I see I see Mike and I see Matthew. Uh, so, so Mike, uh, go ahead and you have the floor if you have any questions or comments or or uh, or anything for us. Hi, yeah, I'm I'm really using you, you guys to test out my new Zoom load on my computer. So, uh, thank you. Uh, no, no, it's just that I'm still plodding along with trying to get a cat sat launched. Uh, the, our ride, which is the Firefly, uh, its last launch had a semi failure. And so uh, this delayed us some more. Uh, I'm going to use the spare time to do some testing on our. Demodulator, you know, we're using DVVS2 also. Uh, and uh, we're trying to actually test the signal to noise ratio, which we haven't done yet. So that's about it. Well, that's a lot. I'm uh, looking forward to it. If there's, if there's anything that we can do to help out with that, we'd be happy to. Um, one of the, if you saw an FPGA channel, uh, the DVB S2 encoder uh, from SWATO has gotten a lot of traction. Um, uh, there's a Pluto version of it, and um, he had some good news. It's been more and more widely used, and uh, Everest uh, is uh, interested in doing a receiver or start, starting to work on the receiver side. Uh, so we're, we're talking about how to best accomplish that, whether to write it from scratch, like the uh, DVB S2 encoder was written, uh, or to go ahead and use HDL coder in, uh, and take Simulink and, and then uh, create the, the HDL. So that's starting. So we should uh, soon have the receiver side, soon with the asterisk, of course, because not, not sure about the schedule there, but soon working on, start working on the receiver. That's been something we've been looking forward to for a while. All right, uh, Matthew, you have the floor. I don't have anything to add today. Well, thank you very much for joining us. 
Okay. And I see uh, I see a I see Rick down there in the uh lower lo you're in the lower right for me. Uh but uh, do, do you have any uh questions or comments for the FPGA team? No, I'm sorry I was a little late. I really enjoy listening to your progress. I was on the phone with Western Telescope, uh, Alex and uh, the guys uh, are still having some uh, interesting problems out there with RFI. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, Nothing, nothing else to, to report, uh, uh, except that the huge burden of commercial work I've been doing uh, is lightening up. Uh, the, there's uh, uh, a bunch of new firmware releases going out to Synergy, and I'm, I'm beginning to see the, the light where I can get back to work on my FPGA projects and, and some uh, deep space projects. Very good. That's good. very good to hear. I uh, understand. All right. Uh, one last uh, round around the the table. Anybody need anything or have any any um, any roadblocks in front of them, or uh, uh, anything that we need to know about on the FPGA side? All right. Well, thank you, everybody. This has been a, a really a pretty good week. Lots of progress, and uh, I'll I'll do a summary of the uh, of the Neptune related work tomorrow. So we, have, we do have a meeting uh, scheduled for uh, seven a.m. on uh, tomorrow morning for for Neptune FPGA work. Uh, I already know that Leonard can't make it for the next couple of weeks, so uh, I'll show up and just have an open open session. Uh, office hours, uh, and then go ahead and and record the updates for the for the OFDM efforts. There's been a lot of interesting things that we've uh, found out and learned and achieved over the the past week. So it'll be a a happy report tomorrow, uh, and will be recorded and and published. So I'll close the meeting now, and I'll see you all on Slack. If there is any um, you know any anything else that you need, just let me know. And I look forward to helping Ken solve the integration problem. Uh, it'll be very exciting to have a channelized receiver up and running. Um, and it's a, the design, the published design is of great interest uh, to a variety of folks already. So it'll be nice to, to get that done. All right, everybody, see you on Slack.